Hello and welcome. This is the essential course for the page builder functionalities. In this course, we'll be creating more pages for our project management application. We'll be going over how to put data in your application, how to create forms and work with create, update and delete in your page builder to manage your data via the front end of your application. And we're gonna work with interactions to make everything go smooth and look really cool in your application. So tag along. And if you wanna have anything that I've set up already, check out the wireframing and data modeling course previously seen in the essentials learning path. Let's go. So to get to my first page, we first open up the page builder. And in the page builder, I wanna change the first page and I wanna add some data to this. The first page that I'm gonna change is my project page. So double click on an existing page or create a new page. And within my project page, I already have a mock-up data table. And this mock-up data table is one I wanna replace with an actual data table. So first, let me remove this mock-up data table. Delete. And after that, we are going to go to the data section within your components. The data section has multiple options to show data within your page, such as a data list, a data table, and a data container. Within that data list, you can add certain items. Within that data table, you can add a data table column. But for now, we're going to use the data table. If you create a new page, you can set up a nice column and drag the data table component within that column. And then a pop-up that says configure data table will appear. In here, we're going to select a model. So select one of the models that is in your application, such as the project model. Click on select and then click on the arrow next to the word project and select the items within the project model that you want to display in your application. So in my case, I would like to say, well, I would like to display name and the end date. Well, but what if I don't do not want to display the end date? Well, then I can remove the end date from the configure data table and add something like status. This is all still the configuring part of your data table. If you're done configuring the data table and you've got the items that you want to show, press save and a data table is generated for you and we'll be able to display the data that you have selected. So let's see how that looks when our page is actually live, because there might be something else that we run into. So let's press play. So here we go. And there you go. An error occurs. And the reason this error occurs is because of authentication and privacy. Within the BettyBlocks application, there are some rules you have to follow. For example, if you want to show data in your front end, you will first have to enable the public checkbox on your data model, because else you will not be able to show your data in your front end, unless you create a login for certain users and roles. And since we want to show our data in a public environment right now, we have to select the public checkbox on the data model. So what we have created right here is a data view. And the next thing we want to create is a detail view. Because as for example, you have a big web shop in front of you. You can see all kinds of different items. And if you click on one of the items, you go to that products overview. This is called a detail view, a view where you can see all the details from a single product. In our case, I wanna have a detail view from a project. This means that when I click on one of these rows over here, I wanna to navigate to a detailed page of a project, a singular project. We're gonna create a project detail page for this. So let's go to our pages overview, click on new page, and we're gonna use the blank page for this. The page will be called our project detail page. And we need to do something with the page path because within this page path, we wanna use a product ID. Because every time we are opening up a single product or a single project, I mean, we need to give a project ID with that URL so that our application knows, oh, this person is referring to project one. This person is referring to project number two. 
And we can do this by typing dash column and then project underscore ID. This is based of the name of your model and the ID behind it. So name of your model underscore ID. If you want to create this for your task model, you will write down dash colon task underscore ID. Create the page. And well, aside from showing data, I wanted to look a little like the other pages. So use a header, or if you created one already, go to your partials, drag the header onto your body, select a column, drag it onto your page. And within this column, we're gonna show the data from one single project. And we're doing that by using the data container components. Drag this into your column and configure the data container to show data from a project model. We're gonna navigate from our data view to one single project item. So we're gonna give data from our data view, so another page, to this container. So select the model, save it. And as you can see, if I click on this data container right now, we have a model with project data, and it has already created a filter for us. As I said, if we want to show project number one, it has to equal project number one. So if we're searching or if someone else wants to search our website or our application for project number 70, but it does not exist, this filter will be denied and it won't show the data. So let's, let's try it out. First, we're gonna use the title component and we're gonna drag that title component in our data container. And instead of typing in something like page title, we can now use a dynamic way of showing our page title. And we can do this by pressing the data, the little icon that we have over here, the insert data icon. And there we can choose from properties from our project model, which we have connected via our data container. Here we can choose the name of a project that we want to show within this container. So let me give it a nice center align so that it shows in the middle of my page. And if I now press the play button, I can open my page and as you can see, this is the clean the house project. And if I just close down this and change the idea that we have behind the URL, this is my first project. If I change the ID from one to two, then, well, yeah, I've called my second project, project one, but it does show a different project. And I can also do this for, let's say four, etc. It changes up the way my projects are showing. So right now we can extend this container with multiple kinds of objects that will filter based on the ID of a project you are showing. So let's add some other items. So first start off with a column. This column is something you can drag into your data container and you can extend the columns just like you've done with the data container. So let's have a look at the page tree. As you can see right now, the row that I've just added is inside my data container. So everything I put into these columns will also be able to, to grab data from this data container. So let's insert something like text, for example. I'd like to show my project description over here. So content, go to the insert data option and select description. And to the side, I'd like to show my project end date. So over here, I'm going to show the end date. And beneath my end date, I am going to show my project status. So here we go. Select the project status. And this is something that I want to make a little more appealing. So let's change it up a little bit. Here we go, project description, put it into the center. And in between my project name, description, and status and end date, I'd like to have a divider. So style it up a little. Keep in mind that you can always try out things yourself. So if you want to do something in a different way, or if you want to make it look a little different, give it a go. Give it a try and experiment, because that's what the page builder is for as well. 
The last thing I want to do right now is add a button so that I can go back to my projects and create a little bit of a navigation flow. So beneath my project status, I'm going to drag the column and within this column, I'm going to put a button that will open up my project page. So drag the open page button into your column and select the project page. Click select page, save. And right now we have an open page and we can change that up to say, well, go back to projects, for example, or give it any other title. You can even put down an arrow icon, such as arrow to the left, so that people know that it's sort of going back to the left, to the previous page. And let's also make a little change in our project page itself, because our project page can now navigate to our project detail page. We can do that by selecting the data table in our project page. So navigate to your main data view. And when you have selected your data table, so not the data table column, but click on the up arrow to go to the data table, scroll down in your options, and there you have the row click option. So what happens when you click on a row? Well, when I click on a row, I wanna to go to a project detail page. And this project detail page, as you can see, asks for a project ID. This project ID, we're gonna to connect to, well, it already says it, our project ID. And what that does is, as I explained earlier, it gives the ID from the row you're clicking on to our new page. So if I play my page or compile my page, I will now have a nice redirect setup from my project so I can click on the clean the house project and it opens up the clean the house project with its description, its end date and the status. And if I can go, I can go back to projects, click on project number three, it will have a different description, a different end date and the status as well. So this is how you create a data overview and a detail overview for a single project.